Russia has decided to sign a mutual defense pact with North Korea. This could be bad for many in Ukraine and will absolutely change the face of the war that is currently transpiring in Europe. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. I picked this up from Reuters. Putin signs into law a mutual defense treaty with North Korea. This happened on the 9th of November. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed into law a treaty on the country's strategic partnership with North Korea, which includes mutual defense provisions, according to a decree published on Saturday. The accord signed by Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in June after the summit in Pyongyang calls on each other to come to the, each other's aids in case of an armed attack. Russia's upper house ratified the treaty this week, while the lower house had endorsed it last month. Putin signed a decree on that ratification that appeared on Saturday on the government's website outlining the legislative procedures. Now I picked this part of the article up from uh, RBC Ukraine. I don't know what their affiliation is. I see that it says Russia gathers 50,000 soldiers, including from North Korea in the Kirks region, and they picked that up from the New York Times. Now, I tried to go to the New York Times, but they have it behind a paywall. So I didn't feel that um, I was going to be interested in, in picking up a subscription from the New York Times. However, we can see that they are claiming that there are 50,000 soldiers al along the Kursk salient. All right, I'm going to get to how this impacts or how it could impact Canada. I want to make everybody understand the moving parts that are happening in this. Now, let's start with North Korea. First and foremost, they are a country that manufactures a lot of opium. And that opium goes to international markets, but a lot of it goes into the, into the Chinese market. Now, China it has been sort of subsidizing North Korea for a long time. They, as, as, I mean, for a long time, since, like since the Korean conflict. There has been a lot of support that comes from uh, China to North Korea so that North Korea is able to maintain their country and not have much of their population flood into China. Now, the population of North Korea is 26 million, and they have a very large, there's all estimates have it at about 7% of their country is, uh, is drafted into the military. And I would imagine that if you were hungry and a young person and you were in Korea, the military probably seems like a safe way out. We must also establish that China and Russia have been involved in this Ukrainian conflict from the beginning. Much of the Chinese manufacturing abilities are going to be utilized inside of Russia. Now, we're going to see, hear people tell you that the Russians are throwing their men away and that all of this kind of stuff, which is not... I don't believe for a second. And why I don't believe that is because Ukraine has never been in a war in a long time, whereas Russia has all kinds of men running up and down the African continent fighting. They have a lot of people in the Middle East, Syria included. So they have modern battle experience. They can look at any of the, bat the conflicts of the Middle East. They can see how people are fighting in the modern age. There's no more of this, you know, lines of hundreds of men running down the field and hoping that, you know, they're the one that can break through the enemy lines. Those things are a way of the past. Now, I believe that the, the press wants you to think along those lines. They want you to think that they're in some sort of Hollywood movie. But the reality is much different on the ground. The individual who's in charge of holding that segment is not going to be tossing away men and hoping that they can just hold the line until the, you know reinforcements may or may not materialize. Just doesn't simply just simply doesn't work that way. Then you'll say, well, what about all the mass, you know, the large scale munitions? Yeah, perhaps. But you know, the media wants you to think that they're they got all these men going. Then how come? How come we don't see these uh, mass casualties on both sides of the conflict? So let's establish right out of the gate that kind of, of premise and understanding of what the media is attempting to do to make it seem like all of your efforts in giving taxpayers dollars to Zelensky, the IMF, and all of the individuals that may be fighting in Ukraine now, the next ripple in this particular issue is uh, North Korea having such a large standing army is fighting in Russian uniforms. 
they also have no human rights, so they can force their workers into factories. They are also experts. I mean, they call them the hermit kingdom, but they are also experts at building things underground. I mean, they, they have whole fa factories that are underground so they can keep them out of the watchful eye of many of the enemies, South Korea being one of them. So here we have this country, this North Korea, that has the friend of China and now has the resources of Russia to bring in all the raw materials required to manufacture weapons, which means that they, of course, can't go after those weapons, right? Because to go after those weapons will, tr will, will inflame Asia. If you are to all of a sudden go after the weapons in North Korea, you bring in China, and if you bring in China... All of a sudden, you're in a big you're in a big war. Now we have a direct conflict in the Asian uh, theater, which, of course, the United States has been trying to avoid for a long time. However, the North Koreans are not don't have that issue. They want men that are battle hardened so that they can, you know, present themselves to the world. But the guy's not dumb. He realizes that his economy is based basically on one product, opium. So here we have the ability for him, for Russia to get all of their munitions manufactured outside the realm of the long range capability of American and British uh, missiles. The material can be manufactured at a, a, a labor that can't ever go on strike, that can't ever try to complain against it. It can't ever be touched because it's got this neutrality and this deal that's hammering out with China. China gets an advantage because now Russian money is flowing directly into the coffers of North Korea, which will helps remove some of the burden and the strain that China has been putting on themselves, like by keeping North Korea propped up as a communist regime. <clears throat> of course, the thing that nobody wants to say out loud, which I'll say right now, is we can now put Chinese soldiers in the front lines along the Sail the, the Kirk salient as an example. The Kursk salient, excuse me, which is the part where Ukraine came marching in a couple of months ago that everybody was excited was going to, you know, make the overall collapse, and they have gone nowhere. They they got it. They're holding those, you know, whatever it is, 175 towns or something like that. It's like it's, it's a lot of towns. But they haven't moved forward since then. Now people are reporting that there are, there's 50,000 Russian Federation troops massed along that very same line. Many of them, 10, 12,000 of them, happen to be from North Korea. And there's a lot of reports out there saying, you know, the North Koreans are getting chewed up and turned into hamburger meat and all of this stuff. But we don't fight those styles of war anymore. So I don't necessarily concur with that assessment. What I will agree with is that by putting them in, in Russian uniforms, they are, unlike, they are on all likelihood putting them under the command of Russians. And by putting them in Russian uniforms, the Chinese can slip a, a whole division in. I mean, if you're in a firefight, I'm not trying to tell you that they, they look identical or whatever, but if you're in the middle of a firefight and you're looking from a satellite image and you have all men from you know that, that part of Asia who are just dressed in Russian uniforms, unless you're completely familiar with the region, you're not going to be able to tell the subtle differences between the North Korean person and the Chinese person that slipped across into into North Korea so that it could end up on the on the front of Ukraine without ever triggering the United Nations or without ever triggering any of the military packs that may then say to themselves oh look China's doing this I mean it's a it's a tightrope right I mean how many we you think of the amount of people in this country that scream because we might be sending nuts and bolts that end up in Israel appreciate all of the products that we make in China, but we to sell exclusively in North America. That doesn't seem to bother any of the bankers, but it might bother some of the Ukrainian people who are now facing off against those people, like against people that are making products, making money that can then be put into the military effort that is being put forward by China and Russia and North Korea and Iran in Europe. So this is a this 
though it might seem innocuous, is quite important, especially for Putin, who now has manufacturing outlets that will basically operate as slave labor, who now has no oversight from Russian satellites, or excuse me, who now has no oversight from American satellites or British satellites or any of that stuff, who can get his hands on all kinds of stuff coming out of China now under the guise of it coming forward from North Korea. North Korea gets the advantage of having money and now they're getting hardened, battle-hardened troops prepared to fight should they decide they want to move into South Korea or any of the other theaters that the North Koreans might be um, talking about. In addition to that, China also gets to have some of their troops to be hardened, battle hardened, because they simply put them in a Russian uniform and move them to the front. This experience can be considered invaluable. You have the materials coming out of China going into North Korea. North Korea's got the cheap labor, or I say cheap labor, but really it's basically slave labor and an enormous army. I mean, to have 7% of your population under arms, you're talking about a lot of guys, a lot of people, a big army. I don't necessarily know that they have a lot of like, you know, high-speed jets and tanks and stuff like that. But the Russians can now manufacture them at a fraction of the cost because the North Koreans are not taking the wages that you might see being manufactured in Russia or Germany or Britain or America. Now, how does this impact Canadians? Well, I would, have, I would not put it past the Liberal NDP party to create a smokescreen based on this. If the Ukrainians begin to lose ground, I don't believe that Russia is trying to recover the entire country. That, that's too much aggravation. But he absolutely wants to take some of these Russian-only territories, and he absolutely wants no NATO missiles and weapons on the Ukrainian soil. Now, by pushing and escalating the Kirk salient in other regions of the, of the country, Will the Western countries all start to scream, oh, we have to send men, we have to put men on the ground just like the North Koreans have done? This is what I'm concerned. I'm concerned that the Canada will you know, do something stupid like declare open war and then say, no, no, we're not allowed to, ha we're not going to have an election because we are in a state of an emergency. And oh, by the way, every man from the age of 25 to 18 is being drafted and sent to Europe so that he can fight in a war with Korea. Imagine the, the, the concept on that. I mean, I don't, I don't see that as a very good idea for Canadians. I don't see that as something that would be beneficial to us. But I can see how if you were sitting in the liberal NDP camp, you would see that as being beneficial to you. I can see how that might be an inspiration or a motivation to kind of make this problem get larger so that they can hold on to the, the power that they cling to so desperately right now. And you say, well, that's a little bit extreme, and maybe it is. But I, what's extreme in my mind is Justin Trudeau still not calling an election. We have so many cases of corruption coming out of the uh, Ottawa. It's hard to keep track of them all. We are humiliated on the world stage. Most of the countries that used to respect Canada now mock, openly mock us, and not just India, but there are many others, Australia. There's other countries that are just openly mocking us personalities look down their nose at Trudeau world leaders can't won't even shake his hand so I wouldn't put any of it past him but I wanted to uh, bring it to everyone's attention because I um, think it's an important and significant most people are trying to dismiss it as just a bunch of North Koreans running around the front in, in Europe and apparently you know they're getting bombed into smithereens I don't believe they may be experiencing casualties. Certainly, I don't believe they're being bombed into smithereens. And there's absolutely more behind the line going on than just these guys running around in the front. He has the manufacturing that he needs. He has no longer the environmental oversight. And good luck for somebody, to, an American, to fire a missile out of Ukraine and drop it on to North Korea. Then all of a sudden, we we have to fold in the Taiwanese element. I mean, the 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 ramifications of that. Well, there's a reason why they haven't already done it every time he, he lights up a dirty bomb. Because they know that that will cause the Chinese to, to come, they know from experience. And then you're all of a sudden embroiled in something a lot larger than just a um, border skirmish between Ukraine and Russia, 
a, a, a conflict and aggravation that goes back to 900 AD. They leave that out of the press, so I thought I should point that out to you. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I uh, want to thank you for listening. I will talk to you next time.